Low riding is a frame of mind. It's part of our artistic form of expressing yourself. I think it's part of our cultural makeup. It's tantamount to us having Aztec dancers or folklorico or mariachis. Low riding is a creative art form as well. I'm 10 years apart from my older brother. He had a couple of buddies that had, one guy I remember had a 34 Chevy. He would always come and pick my brother up and they would take me to the store to go get sodas and candy and I'd get to ride in it. And that's when I told myself, someday I'm gonna always, I'm gonna get me a lowrider. Growing up in South El Monte, you know, we'd always see lowriders in the neighborhood and that's how I was first introduced to it. And now I'm retired and I'm still riding. The car that's behind me is a 1953 Chevy Bel Air. It's a standard shifter, it's three on the tree, as they say. Uh, it's a four-door coupe, business model. We have shaved rear door handles, French antenna and French headlights. Uh, it's got custom uh, paint, uh, both on the roof and the body. The interior is customized. It's got leather and suede interior. It's rolling on Galaxy wire wheels. It's got a really special highlight feature on the roof where it looks like the roof has some concaves, if you will, uh, as you walk up to it. It gives it a special effect. I think my favorite feature I like to point out, it has 1962 Oldsmobile taillights. On the original 1962 Oldsmobile, the taillights ran horizontal. And so that's a special feature because the difference between a 53 Chevy and a 54 Chevy are the taillights. It's got a 216 straight six engine, it's the original engine. And like I said, it's a standard transmission. My wife and I both own it. She picked the colors and the interior, kind of an earth tone based on our tribal roots with a Pascua Yaquis out of Tucson and they live in the desert. And so we kind of wanted that, those highlights for the car. So it's different, different color than you'll normally see. I've had the car since probably the late 90s, early uh, 2000s, and it took about nine years to get to the point where it's at now. I, I try to take it out at least several times a month. For me, it's the whole aesthetic value of getting behind a classic car and being able to go down the road in it and have people just admire it, give thumbs up, and intrinsically, it makes me feel really good. I was born in East LA at White Memorial Hospital, born in the early 50s. I grew up in South El Monte, which was a very rural area at the time. Uh, my parents originally wanted to move to San Gabriel. I remember my mom telling me the story that she ended up telling off the realtor because when they went to look at their house in San Gabriel, he said he needed to get permission from his neighbors to see if Mexicans could move in the neighborhood. And that didn't fit well with them and so, they ended up uh, coming more east. I'm the youngest of four children, and uh, my mother and father, of course, were keen role models for me. My dad, uh, he was a hardworking laborer who put three of his four children into college, and my brother uh, through the Navy. My two sisters and myself all were able to uh, get college degrees. My mom only had a junior high education, but she was the CEO of the household, if you will. She was the backbone. She was the one that inspired all of us to education is key. She was a stay-at-home mom, so when we got home from school every day, she was always there. She played an integral part in our development. My uh, early childhood growing up, Again, I was inspired by my parents and my sisters who were older, and of course, my brother being 10 years older. All of them emphasized education, and I knew I didn't want to be a laborer like my father. I really thought that I wanted to be a professional football player, and I excelled in sports at elementary and junior high. In high school, I played varsity sports and football and baseball. I went on to community college and played two years of Pasadena City College. But that's what kept me motivated. To be uh, eligible for sports, I had to have good grades. I struggled in education. My counselors all would say, you'll never be like your sisters. And I remember her specifically saying, let's get you in wood shop, 
metal shop in a vocational arena because you just don't have the ability to go to college. Because I w wanted to be an athlete, I looked into the recreation and sports leadership arena. At some point in the time, I was running with some friends at Cal State LA who were becoming teachers. Simultaneously is when our pride in our culture and our Mexican-American and Chicano culture was happening and it became part of our curriculum in our schools. So I got my teaching credential and a degree in Chicano studies. And I also got a, a, a Bachelor of Science in uh, Recreation and Sports Administration. Eventually got my master's degree and, uh, and an administrative credential to become a, a school administrator after, after teaching for 13 years. 25 years after I got my master's, I went back and then back to school and in 2002 received my doctorate in uh, organizational leadership. I had started 20 years earlier and got discouraged that, it, you know, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna have to quit my working and focus just on this program. And my wife was the one that said, absolutely not, you're not quitting. I, I forbid you to quit. I literally spent over 40 years in the field of education. Those experiences also led me to be involved in community and civic organizations as well. My biggest professional fulfillment, I believe, was when I worked in the continuation high school arena. I had a passion for an education of working with as what they called at-risk students, students that, for whatever reason, were behind, probably weren't gonna graduate in four years. And those are the students I felt most effective with, and so I always had a passion. I made it a point to work with that population of students because I saw, I valued what those students brought to the table. I saw their artistic ability, but having good mentorship, having those students having good mentorship and good leadership and somebody they could relate to, another Chicano, if you will, uh, helped to inspire a lot of students. I've had students that, you know, to this day will seek me out and uh, thank me for giving them uh, the, uh, the ability and the, and the value that I put in them. Working with those at-risk students inspired me and gave me the, the impetus that I needed to continue in education. And I thought it was uh, necessary for me to, to stay focused because that's what I would preach to my students. That's what I would tell them. I remember there was a DJ on the radio one time called Sancho. He used to speak about education all the time and he used to say, stay positive because Chicanos can. Or he would say, without an education, it's pico y pala time. You know, it's pick and shovel time. And, and, and so I used to repeat those statements to my students and they, they got it. They said, oh yeah, okay, I see. But I couldn't tell them that if I, if I didn't do it. So I had to go on and be the best I could be so they could be the best they could be. I think, you know, to some people in the community, there's a stigma to low riding. You know, it conjures up negative uh, behaviors, negative attitude, uh, bad dudes, if you will. Uh, but low riding is a way of life. That was an added dimension for me to be a low rider because I, it would be something unique to my position and it would open the door to conversation with our community and to students and to a youth. It not only uh, brings smiles to people's faces, but it brings people in the community together. It's really more of a form of art. I think that what lowriding offers and, and having a classic lowrider car, it provides a venue for the community to get together for a, for a common cause, and the common cause is your car and the, and the, and the lowriding. What I would tell people that need an extra word of encouragement, find your niche, find what you're good at, and go for it. You're unique. You have a lot to bring to the table. You just have to find in yourself what motivates you. You're capable of brilliance. You have to search within yourself and be the best you can be on whatever it is. My name is Dr. Roberto Casas. I'm a professional educator and I'm a lowrider role model.